My guest today is Chris Woodruff. Chris, welcome back to the show. Wow. I, I, uh, well, first, thank you. And, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm humbled because I think the last time I was on was only like maybe six, six, seven months ago. So it was earlier this year. I can't remember exactly when. Yeah. Uh, You're talking about HTTP then. Pretty technical topic. But uh, today we're going to talk about something different. We're going to talk about something. Uh, I don't really like this phrase, uh, the phrase soft skills. We're going to talk about career skills, right? Things that you've learned. Yeah. Because, um, well, first of all, you've been in the tech world for how long? Uh, you're going to age me. So I started my post-college career uh, January of 2000 or 1995. Right. so 28 years all right that's about how more long than I've been 28 at. years although i got a later yeah. start than you did i was i had another career before this yeah i was so, i was an, i was an accountant for a while Didn't you were a bean counter much. huh and it's nice. not the kind of thing you brag about but <laughs> yeah you could make good uh, money at that so uh, it's a good a, career you, you can certainly make a living at it but this is more fun yeah tech, tech is more fun. Yeah, it is this is a lot more fun um, you know, I, and I tell you what, you were, uh, when I, I remember moving back to Michigan years, like 20 years ago, and you were one of the first people I met. And I, I really, uh, I really admired well, before I got to know you, I, I knew of you and I saw you speaking. I saw how involved you were with things. Um, and, uh, I thought, you know, that inspired me really to get involved in some of the tech community stuff that we were doing at that time. Yeah. And, and I'm still, and we're still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I came into it late. Uh, so I guess the, the first thing I wish I would have done was, uh, actually gotten into the community a little bit earlier. I, I, I think I started around two, 2005 when I was in Lexington, Kentucky, I started a .NET user group. Cool. But at that point, I was 35 years old, so uh, I was kind of uh, already older for coming into the uh, community. But I I think a lot of people back then may have came into the community when they were a little older, and Mm -hmm. then, uh, then people today. So I think people today realize that they have to uh make themselves unique i i'm not gonna say brand because i hate saying you have to build a brand but i i do think that you have to build a uniqueness to yourself and your career what do you mean give me an example of that well so everyone is unique so you know our our parents always told us that that we were special we're a snowflake I, I I don't think my mom didn't tell me that very much that I was special, but uh, <laughs> well, I was, I'll tell I was, you, you're a special guy, Chris. I was uh, Gen Gen X and and I was a latchkey kid, so single mom and. But um, I think everyone, if nothing else, you you need to make a name for yourself, okay. because what separates you from another person that's trying to get a job or trying to get raise money yeah, so uh, or do anything is is do you have unique skills hmm. and i've i've always said that speaking and writing are really what separates technology people in the community Like there are a lot of smart developers and there are a lot of smarter developers than myself. I I am not a a particularly smart developer. I I find that I can communicate technology pretty well, Hmm. Um, both written and I think my written 
is probably stronger than my speaking, but I, I do a pretty good job speaking and getting ideas out. Um, I learned that from consulting also. So, so that was a skill that, uh, that I honed when I was uh, in the consulting business when I was in Atlanta back in the 90s, late 90s. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, communication, whether it's written or oral communication, that's a skill that uh, uh, everyone should strive to develop. Everyone should get better at it. No, you don't, it's possible you'll never be great at it, um, but without that, I think you're putting a ceiling on yourself. And I, I did work with a lot of people, really strong developers that, you know, great at heads down coding, but when it came to articulating what they had done or, you know, what, you know, finding any requirements or anything that was human communication they struggled with and it's really hard to advance and they feel yeah. without that skill and that, that's a part of that is oral and part of it is written if you have neither of them you still have a good career but uh, yeah you'll, you'll, you can have start. a good career yeah but so i i think it comes down to everyone's a salesperson and you okay. know a lot of people don't like when I say that okay. or when people say that, but I, I truly think everyone is a salesperson because we sell ourselves all the time. You sell yourself when you interview for a job, you sell uh, your company when you are a consultant and you meet with a potential client or customer for a project. <laughs> If you're a leader of a of a uh, software engineering team, you sell yourself constantly because that's how you build trust. So, and how you how you become a salesperson and build trust is by speaking, socializing. So, I do think it's very important to have, like you said, oral skills, written skills. But I knew so many people that that had deficiencies in social social situations. And you know, we I mean, I'm a very shy person. Uh, you it might not sound like that right now, but if you put me into a room where I didn't know one person, I one, I would probably try to try to uh, get out of that room and <laughs> try to leave. go someplace else. Yeah. But so I'm a very shy person until I meet people. Okay. And it just, you, you just have to, there are, our careers are driven so much by human skills and, and that's, I don't call them soft skills. I call them human skills. Yeah. I, I think searching for a good word for that. Human yeah. skills is a good one. I, I I think they're our careers are really driven by by the human skills that we develop. And some people have those skills naturally, and some people have to build those like a muscle. Yeah, and this it is a muscle because it, it implies that it, you can exercise and you can get stronger. And uh, I, I agree with you. You said earlier that um something like self-deprecating, like I'm not a smart developer. I'm not the smartest developer, but really um, I think it's really just a matter of emphasis. You know, if you're, uh, I think about the MVP program, for example, you and I are both a part of that at one time. And I think you still are, right? Nope. Oh, okay. I'm, well, you were for a I long time. You were for a long time. Uh, uh, I was, and, I think I was six years. Yeah, I haven't been time. in the MVP Program so, since. so I always yeah. thought that the the MB program is a Microsoft program that rewards uh, people for sharing knowledge, not necessarily for being the the best technologist. You have to be a good technologist, but if you're willing to share that, if you're willing to speak, blog, go on Stack Overflow or forums and answer questions, mentor younger developers, you know, uh, run user groups, whatever, run conferences. If you're willing to share whatever knowledge you do have, that's rewarded. I think that also. Uh, Companies will reward that as well, and customers will reward that because, um, you know, what good is knowledge if it's locked inside your head? Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you probably remember back when we both started out 
back in the 90s. There was a there was a term that everyone used. It was called the lone wolf. OK, you, you note that. So the lone wolf is that one developer who's who's on a team that doesn't interact with anyone. He's just heads down. Uh, he doesn't have very good social skills. And and to be honest, that type of person flourished in the 70s and 80s and probably the early 90s. And I think the Internet. Uh, change some of that because well agile a lot of things changed it i i think the emphasis on team uh changed a lot and kind of made kind of put all of those lone wolves like out of maybe not out of a job but made them change um so so that's another skill i uh, that you need to have is teamwork you, you really need important. to yeah you you need so but i mean it all comes down to these human skills that that we uh that we have and and i like the old saying like everything i learned i learned in kindergarten <laughs> i think it's a book isn't it i think so <laughs> i think it's a book or or someone <laughs> has has done like lots of articles and stuff but but really i mean to i think if if you take a look at uh trying to make your career better it all comes down to those human skills and and maybe we should just dig in and and talk about something different because i think we're just kind of rehashing <gasps> over and over again what right should now. we talk about well um let 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 me do this so i about a year ago i had a uh a series of of conversations with a college freshman at michigan state university where i went to school great school. and he was a the best yes he was a computer science major and i had signed up to uh to help people or just to chat with people about uh career career discussion and he started asking me some questions and you know i look back and i think about this so much uh, i didn't really know anything about how to how to drive my career uh, so i went to college i was one of the, I think I was the second person in my extended family to ever go to college. Um, yeah, and and I grew up in a very lower middle class uh, family, UAW, blue collar workers. I mean, no one. I did. I, there's nothing wrong with that, and and I loved my my uh, my childhood. My mom worked in a factory, but the thing about it was I didn't have a role model that showed me what post college was was supposed to be like. Like I got a college, and I was just happy to be making money because I didn't really have a lot of money growing up. I didn't really know what my path was going to be, and and I think. Back then, so this was early 90s. I don't think universities and colleges really tried to to help students with their post-college careers. I think they do a much better job today because they have, I think at Michigan State, engineering you have to have, or there's entrepreneurial classes that you can take, or you may have, they may be required. Okay. But and, th and there's people, then there's mentors from the industry like yourself. That are helping. Yeah, we didn't have any of that. I mean, I don't remember any of that. So, so one thing is, I think anyone that's in college right now should definitely try to think and try to talk to people about what a career should be, what what kind of path they they should 
they should start on. I'm not saying that they should say like map out a, a path for 10 years, but at least but at least find something that they're interested in. There are so many interesting aspects to software development or IT right now. You have web development, you have system development, you have AI now, you have data, like data science wasn't even, wasn't even thought of uh, 25, 30 years ago. So I always tell people, find something that you're really interested in and dig into that mm -hmm. uh, because you have to be unique. Either, either you're going to be, you're going to go for breadth or you're going to go for depth. And if you go for depth, like a, a deep knowledge over something, pick something that you know is going to be around in, in 20 years. Right. Uh, because you and I both know lots of people that dug into this technology that Microsoft brought out called Silverlight, oh, yeah. and they became experts in Silverlight, and five years later, it was gone. Yeah. Well, the thing about Silverlight, though, is at least they learned XAML, which is a technology that's applicable. They could transfer those skills somewhere else. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I, right. From my own life, I, I started out as a Fox Pro developer. Now, Fox Pro, I don't think it exists anymore. Um, oh, it does. There, oh, is there still still being, Fox, oh, yeah. Oh, there, there are still, still Fox. Well, there are still applications out there being maintained, yeah. but I don't know if there's any new versions of Fox Pro. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't um, think there's any new. And so it wasn't yeah. – it, it's not uh, that you could look at that and say that that was a poor career choice because I invested in something that wasn't going to keep growing for the next 25 years, except I learned SQL. I learned relational databases, and that has served me really, really well. If I, it forced yeah. me to learn, or whatever, they didn't teach me that in college. You know, I, exactly. I was, uh, now, they taught me to I, input text files and sort them yeah. and output. <laughs> yeah, a text I, file. I, I did have a class at Michigan State. It was, uh, it was relational databases, but it was oh. actually teaching you how relational databases worked, like. Okay. The okay, insides of, oh, and I, had nothing I don't, rem I don't remember. I mean, to be honest, that that had no help on my career. Oh, it was just like operating systems, like yeah, knowing okay. how, knowing the the insides of an operating system. Now, wow. interesting stuff, and I probably have used it a little bit, but I think not directly, more indirectly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, so so. Think about, I always tell people, even if you're 10 years into your career and you don't, and you, and you kind of go all over the place and you do lots of different stuff, at some point you should just try to find something that, that you're really super interested in and dig into it and be unique, like become Become a, a a person that when people think of that technology or that topic, they think of you. You're the go-to guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's, that is going to give you the ability to sell yourself over and over again, much easier. If, if you have to, if you have to sell yourself because you don't have a lot of depth in in certain areas. It's much much tougher. So, good advice. Uh, so this is this is really good advice. Somebody starting out in their career, find something you're passionate about, learn it deeply, become the go to person on that. Uh, what about but afterwards? You know, you can't just. Uh, I mean, the thing about technology is it's so dynamic; it changes yeah. so rapidly. Yeah. So you're always learning. So my wife was in HR. She was a, a HR manager. And there's she had to learn a few things. But she was amazed that, like, I had to keep learning so much that I was buying books. I was going to user groups. And, th and that's really what got me into the community. 
So I was a, when I first got out of college, I got into, and I developed software with Delphi, Borland Delphi, oh, yeah. which was kind of a, a VB, a VB6 competitor. I remember Delphi. And, yeah. Lino, was, Lino Tadros worked on Delphi and I think Anders did as well. Yeah. Well, Anders created it. Right. Crander, yeah, he created Turbo Pascal, which turned into Object Pascal, which then he took all those, all that skill and and came over and did the uh uh did C sharp and stuff in, right. in the dot net framework. But uh so I started going in Atlanta, I started going to uh user group meetings huh. uh at UPS World Headquarters. They would have Delphi developer uh user group and that's where i met mark miller uh-huh. we all know mark crazy mark uh <laughs> but he was a big delphi developer and he came he would come maybe once or twice a year and speak to this user group and and that's where i got the idea hey i should do this and i'll tell everyone a secret i i am very very awkward at speaking i think i've told you this in the past i had a speech impediment when i was a child i didn't start talking till i was well like well past three uh almost got put into a school for deaf kids because they thought maybe i was deaf uh had speech therapy until i was 13 and i i basically never liked to speak in front of anyone until I was about 30. And I just went, uh, you know, I have to get over this fear. And, and I did. So that's probably why I was a late bloomer in, in this, but, uh, but let's go back to knowledge. Cause I I'm rambling today. I'm, I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> I, I, I seem to be good. rambling all over the place, but, uh, so with knowledge, you have to keep learning. So one thing that I do is every year, every January, I pick three new technology, three new things that I want to learn for the year. Hmm. They may not be total technology. So so sometimes in the past, I think I've learned, I've taught myself like F sharp. Oh. I haven't really used it, but at least I, I learned it and I know about it. Uh, I read and practiced more about speaking. So, I, but I always pick three things. So this year I, I'm doing Rust. So I'm teaching myself the Rust language. I am getting into uh i bought a mac studio so i'm trying to get into the the mac uh uh, operating system a little bit more and i cannot remember what the third one was but but you know every year i just i pick some new things to learn because you may not use those very heavily but it's always good to learn new ideas uh go to conferences you don't have to speak at them just go and learn things talk to people uh read books books are still so important uh and i'm not talking technology books i'm talking just business books or personal development books or autobiographies or biographies i have learned so much just from reading about people's lives. I just finished a biography of J. Robert Oppenheimer last week. Ooh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, just... American Prometheus. That's the book on which the new movie was based. I haven't seen the movie yet, but. It, oh, the, the movie's good. Oh, I have to, I'll have to, uh, uh, read that. I just got done with a Da Vinci, uh, biography. <laughs> Uh, and that was fascinating to to learn about uh, the the life of da vinci so so yeah i mean just you know the the whole key to this is may improve yourself constantly yeah. you know you and i 
you know what? I, I will reiterate. I am not, if I walk into a room of developers, I am, I am on the lower half of, of most rooms and I'm not being self-deprecating. I'm just being r- real. Uh, there my, are my, so my many... feeling is that if you're, if you walk in a room, you're the smartest guy in the room. You're probably in the wrong room. Probably you're not going to learn anything. From yeah. That room. Probably need well, to be in a different room. Exactly. Never be the smartest person in the room. Always be one of the dumbest people in the room and you will elevate yourself. You know, they, you know, they say, if you want to be a wealthy person, associate with wealthy people. If you want to be smart, associate yourself with smart people. It's the same thing in our industry. If you want to be a good developer, associate with, with, developers that you look up to and and you want to emulate and i have so many friends in in our industry that that i that i call friends but i also look up to them i also try to emulate them uh and i'm not gonna name any of them because i won't give them big heads but uh (laughs) i won't stroke their egos but uh there are so many good people that that want to help you i agree and When when you learn something, share it with some someone else. Help out people that are coming behind you, because yeah. uh, we always get we get lots of help getting up the hill, and you have to you have to extend a hand to get people to where you're at. So help people get up that hill uh, in their careers. Awesome. Well, we're just about at time, but before you go. I'd like you to tell me a little bit about your latest podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. So our the podcast that I started uh, with uh, Martin Below and Khalid, and I cannot pronounce Khalid's last name. So Khalid and Martin both work at uh, Jet Brains. I used okay. to work with Martin, uh, and they're just great guys and we started this podcast it's called the breakpoint show you know breakpoint like in like your debugging, debugging. Breakpoint. yeah and it's just us talking it's usually about half an hour mm-hmm. 20 minutes to 40 minutes uh we just talk about stuff and we we ramble sometimes but it's just us talking about something so like yesterday we came out with uh an episode talking about the missing parts of .NET, like things that should be in .NET, things that uh, we look at other languages like Python. Uh, There was an example where Khalid was uh, grading or being a judge at a high school uh, computer science competition. And this young lady came in and she had written this Python application that hooked to a, uh, a, a artificial intelligence, like a machine learning model to do visual uh, vision uh, identification. And she wrote this thing and she could identify the number of fingers that people would, would hold up in front of a camera. Cool. That's amazing as a high schooler. Yeah. But Khalid said, Hey, I want, how hard would this be to to build this in uh, .NET? And he found it was almost impossible to build in .NET. And because we don't have the tools and we don't have the ease to to bring a lot of this uh, knowledge into .NET. It's probably out there, but it's just difficult to use. Interesting. So where, where can I find this yeah. podcast? You can go out to breakpoint.show. So dot it's not show. Dot com. I, I didn't even know that was a top level domain. Yeah. So breakpoint. breakpoint.show is is our uh, URL. So awesome. I will check it out. Looks like you've got four of them published so far. We do. We we bring one out every two weeks. So, uh, and we have we bring the videos. So we have audio and video. So we bring the videos out to YouTube. 
So we have a we have a, a channel out on YouTube also. All right, Chris. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Dave. And again, sorry I I rambled, went all over the place. I was born and, a rambling man. I can relate. To uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Me too. My technology community is full of knowledge, and thankfully, they're all my friends.